Can you hear me now? Yes. Can you hear me? Is it my up? Yeah. One in there. Can you hear me? Good afternoon, everyone, or good morning. Um, my name is Peter Alvarez. Thank you for joining us today at Civilian Review Board Public Meeting. And thank you all here and the members of the audience, um, the public here uh, for, the, for the CRB meeting. As a note, this meeting is open for the public to attend and is being recorded through Zoom. Zoom has been set up for video recording purposes only. It is not an option for public participation at this time. If anyone needs a transcript of this meeting afterwards, Please reach out to OPAP Board at opapboards at boston.gov. That is O P A T B O A R D S at boston.gov. Public comment will not be held during this meeting. You are welcome to submit any comments that you have to OPAP Boards at boston.gov. And they will be acknowledged at the next OPAP Commission community meeting, which will take place on Thursday, December 14th at the OPAP office in Roxbury. Again, thank you to the members of the public who are here today. I'm now going to take attendance of all CRB members who are present for this meeting. When you hear your name, please audibly acknowledge that you are present. All right, uh, in attendance, we have a uh, board member, Nellie Carruthers. If she's on her way, uh, Reverend Wayne Daly. Present. Uh, board member, uh, Joshua Dankoff. Here. Board member, Ann Hernandez. Member, Tara Register. Here. Board member, B. Chris Sumner. Yeah, B. Chia Peter Alvarez. F4 folks. Um, so we would need two more to make a quorum. Uh, it's our expectation that there will not be quorum since we know two of these board members can't make it. So even if the one that is on their way makes it, there won't be a quorum today. So we'll have to revise uh, the public meeting agenda here um, and maybe you know set up some time in new business to discuss kind of what are the best times for folks to meet. Um, and granted. The three of you are folks that are here pretty regularly, so uh, finding out the best time to meet with the three of you may be, um, you know, we'll have to also circle back to the rest of the board. Um, and just to remind us, everyone here on Thursday in the same place will be the commission meeting, and that's where public comments are taken, um, and that's where myself and the uh, judge, the chair of the internal affairs panel uh, will be in attendance at the moment we don't have uh, executive director for the commission as of yet so it will be the two of us um, and public comments will be taken um, to continue uh, this, so we'll run through the agenda here introduction review and approval of past meeting minutes we'll have to skip over that due to lack of quorum but we can hear the OPAT directors executive directors of court um, and we will have other business, which will be uh, just kind of looking at what are the best times for folks to meet, time of day, um, you know, time of year, kind of you know, the next meeting is going to be in January and just trying to, you know, lock in kind of are there times that are better based on what we know, what we know about other board members. Um, we know some board members have standing meetings um, that are around this time. So maybe we need to think about, you know, having having meetings at a different time uh, during during those periods. Uh, so since we're not going to do the first order of business, which is approving the prior meeting minutes, uh, we'll move on to the executive director's report. The chair, um, as the chair, will acknowledge that uh, yes, Yasmin Radasi to present the report to the CRB. Hi, everyone. Um, so it's a pretty brief report. Um, just in terms of staffing updates, like Peter mentioned, we um, don't have any executive director yet, and there's also just still on the And uh, deputy director John Sayed left.
Um, and then I just have some updates around community engagement. Um, our office has been attending a variety of community uh, meetings just to help spread the word about what we do here. So in October, we attended a Union Capital Boston resource fair at the Bruce E. Bowling Building. Um, and residents were able to stop by our table and ask us questions and find out more about what we do in the community, um, what services we provide, and about upcoming events. And we were also able to give out COVID rapid tests and uh, MBTA, not loaded, but um, just to Charlie Clark. Um, in November, we've also been um, organizing presentations to youth serving organizations in the city. So uh, organizations like Mothers for Justice and Equality, which is just upstairs and presented to their youth, um, to um, IDA, Inc. I'm going to go through this, I'm so sorry, Inc. Minos, Black Boricua, and Acción. Um, and uh, we basically uh, tailored each other of these presentations to youth, um, just letting them know that we exist. We showed them some youth focused data on FIODs and arrest data, which they found very interesting. Um, and we also gave them an overview of the positions that we that, that would be interesting for you. Um, and if there's any other youth serving organizations that are interested in having our or having our staff come to present to them so they can find out more, they should feel free to reach out to the office. Uh, in November, we also sent out our first monthly mm -hmm. newsletter. So we're hoping to keep that going mm -hmm. each month so that we can keep up to date on what we've been working on, maybe do a little brief info on the investigative process, mm -hmm. on uh, data that we have on our website and then upcoming meetings. And if anyone's interested in joining our newsletter, you can email opatboards at boston.gov or we have a little sign in or sign up part on our website. Um, you just send your email and zip code and it adds you directly to our list. And uh, just last thing, our Youth Advisory Council held their meeting earlier this month and they set the calendar for 2024. And they've also begun to discuss police reform policies from their perspective that they would potentially be presenting to the OPAC Commission potentially next month, um, depending on how tailored their ideas are. Um, and then just a reminder that we're still accepting applications from interested Boston residents between the ages of 14 and 19. Um, and you can find out more information and the application form on our website. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, yeah, Mr. Gossi, uh, wanted to see if any board members here had any questions. Yes, me. Um, <clears throat> yeah, uh, thank you for the report. Uh, nice to hear the work being done. I um, clearly hope that staffing issues, which are, I think, not handled by this office, that's the, the mayor's office that is making those hires. Is that right? Mm -hmm. um, the, our last meeting were the first first or second time that we had sustained findings. Uh, has the DVD commissioner responded to those findings? Yes. Yeah, I um, sent out an email to all the board members with the responses, and they are also posted on our website. So that was, I believe, page 5 and 190. One of the cases, 175, uh, declined to sustain the case, and 190 sustained the case with the recommendation of the reprimand of the um, and we do have time, or we have an agenda item for OPAC Commission meeting on Thursday to discuss those responses and case numbers to the public and public testimony. Yeah, there. Is there an opportunity to um, maybe just give suggestions of ways to do of other places to outreach? Like I love that you did UCB. That they're they're awesome. But as you were reading, like. Being in the community, I just know of, a, of some other places that would be beneficial. And I can even email them to you or yeah, that would be very helpful. Um, I think a lot of the feedback that we got at the at the UCB um, fair is that people don't really know that we exist. So we're really looking to identify opportunities for us to show up uh, to our faces, get to know the community, let the community get to know us. And, and yeah, I'm really happy to hear that. So thanks for letting us know. Agreed. Thank you. Um, just a question, and I think probably other board members have, and, and Josh kind of alludes to it. Uh, and yeah, you may not know the answer, um, but I think for the record, we'd like to know. Um, just do we have a sense of timing on a new executive director appointment and interviews and stuff like that? I just uh, I know it's not in the purview of this office to appoint someone to run this office, but wanted to get a sense if there was some. Loading out there, or 
expectation. Yeah, I, I think that um, the mayor's office just really wants to make sure that we have someone that's qualified for the position and the ordinance lays out pretty specifically what the qualifications are. So they're just trying to find candidates that fit those, can those conditions and not rush the process so that we don't end up with someone that can't work. Um, the last time I spoke to them, they were hoping in early of next. Is the deputy director position posted? Um, no, just because I don't want to make any assumptions for the new executive director in terms of who they would want to hire. So I think the way that we've been thinking about it is getting an executive director in place. And I've just temporarily been taking over the duties of deputy director. And I don't think that, I mean, we're still doing the same work that we've always been doing, just staying the course. Uh, just to, to respond there, I, I, I would think that the ED is going to there. No, that makes perfect sense. Yeah. Just checking. Uh, but I, I, I understand the question too. But yeah, I mean, hopefully, it gets uh, we get an ED pretty quickly, um, and, and that's the hope. Um, okay. um, looking at sorry, go ahead. Yeah, go ahead. Uh, looking at the list of current members, I see that there are seven uh, named members, and that the ordinance uh, calls for nine. I also know that's not something that. Is this office's responsibility to uh, to appoint those members? I'm just curious what you know about the status of uh, the, the empty chairs, uh, at least at the unnamed empty chairs. Yeah, um, so I've been in regular communication with the mayor's office that handles boards and commission appointments. Um, so uh, the reason that we're down to seven is, as you know, Carrie Mays, who's our youth chief, um, resigned from her position. And she was a city council appointee, so that's something that we have to go to city council. And obviously, or not obviously, sorry, their last council meeting is actually tomorrow, and then they're over for the session, and then we have a new incoming city council. But something that would have to be done through the public safety and criminal justice chair of the city council. So they're looking to have that scheduled as early as possible in the new year once the chairs are appointed for each of the They have to go through and accept uh, applications, and then they have to have working sessions on who they want to put forward as names to the mayor, and the mayor selects from the pool that is submitted by the city councilors. And then the second uh, vacancy that we have is Amy McGamey's um, position, and she was a community nominee. So that is uh, a mayoral appointee from a pool of community advocates, um, which I've been assured they are also prioritized. Is there anything we can do? Like, is there a pool? Is there, if, if we wanted to contact the city directly to say, hey, this is a priority, who would we mm -hmm. talk to there? And just know, like, are they like saying like, oh, we don't have anybody, or they, they've got a bunch of people? Because for us, it's a priority. And um, I think if you guys have people in mind, it does not hurt because you do have. Um, so if you want to either send them to me and I can pass them along to the mayor's office, I know that the city council seat specifically, they're going to set up. Um, what they did initially was they have like an open application portal on the city council website for and submit their names for consideration for that city council seat. Um, I'm not sure that the mayor's office has an exact process for the mayoral appointee, um, but I can also connect offline to see if I can put you in contact with the names that you would like to submit. Um, and then in addition, for folks that have their terms expiring in January, the mayor's office has suggested, and this is why I was reaching out to get your updated resume, contact information, and all of that stuff, is um, they'll want to put you back into the pool so that the mayor has that to draw from. So I took the liberty of putting that together for them, um, and I will be in contact if they do want you to also submit applications for your Can you remind us, I know the youth position has an age range. What, mm -hmm. Does anyone remember what that is? Mm -hmm. Thank you. Sorry, and I think for anyone listening in, um, also feel free to send nominations to OPAP board, stock of, um, anyone here as well, members of the public. Um, we, I think we need a large pool to pull from and also, you know, to deal with any resignations or incapacity uh, of, any, of any board members to the extent they can no longer do it. We just need to have a group of 12 there and also remember it's a two-prong process. So some are community nominees that the mayor selects, and then others are nominated by the city council, presented to the mayor, and that's where she selects. So there's going to be two spaces in which the mayor does appointments, but in both instances, 
um, just keeping in mind that we also have to uh, um, nominate people at the committee at the, the, at the committee of the city council um, because she, if one of our one of our absent uh, one of our members that's resigned is part of the city council nominations and so like that can't be appointed until the city council does that so they're going to need a pool there i mean i think there's nothing wrong with having a pool on both ends um but just making sure that like you're submitting names in both um in both in both pools yeah and that's exactly what the mayor's office suggested is that even if you weren't appointed through the city council process like submitting your name so that your name is definitely in both pools all right, if there's nothing further, I was going to move to other business, which would be to select the time, and then thereafter we'll go into not executive session quite, but the dismissal of the cases before any executive session. We cannot go into executive session without quorum. So um, I think for myself, uh, the time is fine. And, and again, I feel like, interestingly enough, I, I think these are all of us here are people that are typically here at the CRB meetings. So um, I guess we got to think of other times in which we are able and available to come that may work better for you know our existing board members, but also future board members that are going to be appointed. Taking into account, I think in particular the 18 to 21 spot, um, where that feels to me that could be a senior in high school up to like someone in college, mm -hmm. um, which means their schedule may be um, more tied up prior to four o'clock or three. Mm -hmm. um, just thinking out loud about that, um, that perhaps there's some kind of avenue to like have it be at 3.30 or four. Um, I think it, it could work out well for folks that are going to a day job because it's just leaving early from work where maybe 11 to, you know, whatever time. I think we've ended at like 4 o'clock before from 11 to 4 due to backlog. Um, that's also taking into account if we did do 3.30 or 4 o'clock that like that means, yeah, 7, 8 night, um, which has its own kind of package of of concerns for folks in terms of like getting home, family, dinner, but you know, I think we're kind of at a spot where we, we do have to take that into account, especially with a youth member. And just trying to see with all of you, just generally, like it doesn't, the next board meeting is scheduled for January, or are we voting on that? Okay. Yeah, we're voting on that on Thursday. So we don't have the time exact yet. So like maybe we think about time, like the time of day and, and is there any time that's kind of a no go taking into account that like you know it will be about four or five times a year it's not going to be all the time um but we want to try and prevent any unexpected you know i would say for myself if it's a day that i know i'm home alone with the kids like that it's a sitter cancels that i can't come right like so um just trying to think about that piece and maybe we maybe we can talk a little bit about it now, but maybe we just kind of email uh, with Yasmin about it uh, on what times work better. But I'm willing to do the the 3.30, 4 o'clock, especially thinking about the youth member, because I almost feel like if that person's college, community college, in high school, or working a nine to five type job, like it would be that they're getting out early. Um, and usually, you know, when you first start your career, you don't have as you don't have as much flexibility and right. like kind of how you get out of work. Um, so I just, I, I would just go for the record, like 3.30 or 4 could work. I think, you know, in order for that to work, like we, think maybe we, and just as an idea, think about how we do it. Maybe that's the first couple of meetings we do it that way and see like if that works for timing. Um, and if the first meeting we have quorum, around that time, perhaps that might lead to us believing that maybe that's a good time. Is there any concern in like that going into the later, like, you know, six, seven, because um, that's kind of the timing that folks would let out. Um, I know even in a job situation, folks are more hesitant to have folks staying after hours. Um, you know, <clears throat> concerns. Um, 
I mean, this time, this time is good. I mean, even if you're eating because the meat is so spread out. Yeah. Um, it, my stomach is, it could hurt. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. So we can do eating and same day, Tuesday, you know. For yourself, Tara. I just want to make sure I register everyone's kind of thoughts in the moment because um, I think it could flirt create a flurry of thoughts for others, like, yeah. oh, yeah, like, I see that point, and I want to make sure. I can be flexible as long as I know the dates. I'll put them in my, you know, record them and be available like I have been. Um, I like the evening option for our young people so that we don't um, exclude, you know, what they're doing with their life. There are certain days in the evening that I cannot mm -hmm. um, do evenings, and that's usually like a Tuesday or Wednesday. So I'm doing my parenting classes every Tuesday for 15 weeks. Okay. So that would hit me one of those days. And Wednesdays, um, Wednesday evenings, I'm not available. Um, that's perfect. Six to seven, right? So, but other than that, I will make it work as long as I have the dates ahead of time. Yeah, uh, I have a preference for daytime, but I can make the afternoon evening work. Uh, Mondays and Tuesday afternoons are harder. Okay. Okay. Um, yeah, I, it's uh, I, I do understand because I was what I was going to say to you was Monday afternoon and then. Um, Look, I, I it's not this, this, this is something. Yeah, I can make. Yeah. It okay. Um, I think yeah, I think it's going to be important to just think about, and I think registering as a. Interesting, Tara. Uh, <laughs> you know, her days, like she has a parenting class every Tuesday and Wednesday night for 15 weeks. So, the, so those evening times won't work. I think to the extent we do get a youth member, I think what you hear here is we just want to make it so that they are able to attend and, and we want to be accommodating to that schedule to make sure that they can come. <laughs> and I know. That's going to be a rotating thing because they don't have school, but like for the most part, it only fall on two days that they have school if they have school. Um, and then with the job, I, I think we just want to be as accommodating as possible and see what the heart of the possible is with, with whoever is appointed to that spot. But thank you all for seriously, thank you all for being here on typically all the time. Um, that, that's really appreciated and it's appreciated for the folks who join online, the folks who join here, the staff, everyone that prepares for the day. And I will say for myself, it's really very much appreciated as someone who's been here at each meeting, um, seeing all of you and the commitment is, is really important. Uh, so, you know, thank you. I can't say that enough. Uh, so uh, with that, we want to move to kind of just to dismiss cases. Um, that, you know, kind of out of scope, um, and then from there, we, we will move to adjourn. Um, so, if you want to give us the, the rundown of the dismissed cases. Yep, so the cases that are being dismissed by OPAC staff prior to being brought for review by the Civilian Review Board are case numbers 48, 49, 70, 139, 206, 207, 25, 26, 35, 39, 45, 250. Thank you. If uh, board members, I, there's no other. Uh, business for today if you would like to anyone online and in the audience will be here on Thursday uh, for the OPAC Commission meeting um, and there we will take public comments uh, if there's no other comments from the board we'll just adjourn um, and hopefully we can uh, work this out sooner rather than later um, I know there's some this is a point. I know there's some uh, regs that are going to be you know, presented at the OPAC Commission. Those are online as well. Um, and partly it's to deal with um, what happens when there's a lack of quorum, because I think it's come up. And so 
uh, one of the proposals there is it gets punted, punted to the commission. So if you don't have it, mm -hmm. so in order to expedite the process, like if there's a conflict and the conflict could be a lack of quorum, uh, one of the things that's up for proposal is, you know, when does it get punted to the commission? And, you know, there's different proposals out there between like two, two lack of quorums, um, be frank, and a public, so a public meeting is, I know proposal of one, and then it goes to the commission to expedite process for community members that are, that are there. But that's my own, right? It has to go through kind of the more formal process. We just wanted to share my thinking on it um, and just, you know, say I, I do think it's important to, to try to close these out efficiently um, and, and leaving things hanging for, you know, two meetings is, is, is six months. Um, so we want to be able to, you know, the commission meetings are right after. So if you have one, you miss quorum, then they'll hear it there and it'll be added to business. A smaller group, quorum's easier to achieve um, and, you know, can process things quickly. Uh, yeah, I think that, that's how, where I stand. Just wanted to share it with you all. It's, it is a public, the regs are posted publicly. Um, and, you know, that's what's going to be discussed on Thursday, and I feel like it's very relevant uh, for kind of today and, and, and meetings in, in the not so distant past. So wanted to make, put that on your radar in case you have comments and you can't join to send them um, so we can kind of consider those during the public comment period. That'd be appreciated um, because more folks that comment on that. I, I'm just saying my view, but others can feel differently, but I just wanted to give my view and why, um, and to the extent folks want to add to that or look at the other regs and, and kind of uh, give their own commentary, please do. Uh, but with that, I'm going to move to adjourn at 11.39 a.m. Uh, do we have a second? Second. Seconded by uh, Reverend Wayne Daly. Uh, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? We're all here. We're going to that's it. Uh, we adjourn. Thank you all. Thank you everyone for coming. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.